Hi there. This unassuming little brick that you see in front of you is a product by a company called eSun. It's uh, called eMorph. And what it is is a 3D printer filament uh, designed for FDM printers, uh, the, the type that extrude a typical plastic layer over layer. Um, and the unique property about this filament is that once it's printed, or heated up, but generally printed, uh, it's remoldable and reshapable and sculptable and you can add color to it and such. You can add color to it while it's printing as well, which is what I've done. Just a couple of very short, you know, little bursts of line there, some, a couple different browns and amber or whatever it is. Um, the f unique thing about this filament is that, like I said, because it's moldable and, and reshapable, you apply heat to it, and you can do it countless times, uh, at least as far as I can tell so far, it, it seems to be numerous times. Excuse me. And it allows you to be able to reshape it into pretty much anything that you want it to be. So, you know, it obviously doesn't need to stay in that shape. Uh, if you want to be able to use that to be able to create a very specific object that you, you know, if you have the talent and are able to sculpt things, then, you know, this is a great product to have because you can have the colors added into any kind of a block that you want and from there you could apply the heat um, and then reshape it to whatever you wanted it to be so some people you know might have something printed off that's going to be an almost finished product for them um, so they may not need to do very much work on it except maybe a little bit of sculpting and fine-tuning things you know and that'd be fine other people might want to be able to take this as more of a, an arts and crafts kind of thing where you can, you know, sculpt and make things that you want out of it with some really neat color blends without having to paint afterwards. Or some people may want to use an object like this to be able to create molds. Uh, I will be running a few more tests as far as what you can mold with this kind of product. So when you create something, if you're going to be able to use it for wax or silicone or candles, you know, any of that kind of thing, see how much of a tolerance it has for higher temperatures. Um, According to the manufacturer's recommendations, when this product is printed, uh, it usually prints at about 80 to 110 degrees Celsius on the extruder. Um, they don't really give a recommendation for the heat bed. I found that that temperature that they suggested for the extruder is way too low. Uh, it, it didn't print at all. Nothing came out. So I upped it a couple of times, ran a few tests, and the magic number seems to be between 165 to 171 and the ambient temperature on the print bed being about 45 degrees Celsius. Um, this is done at 50 millimeters per second, which is fairly quick. It's not too bad. It's, it's, it's a really decent speed for most printers. So, you know, you're not waiting a lot of time for something like this, especially when it's, you know, there's not a lot of detail, right? Uh, and this is done at about a 50 to a 60% infill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply heat with this using a heat gun, uh, just a low setting on a standard heat gun, and uh, we're going to do a couple reshapes on this to see just how well it takes it and how well these colors blend in. Okay, here we go. So you don't need to get it too close. You know, just a few inches away and just light passes over it for about 30 seconds to a minute max. And you'll, you'll notice that as as it's getting to that point where you can start sculpting it, uh, it'll start to, to glisten. You'll see a shine on it. You know, it's the plastic melting, obviously. And uh, it'll start to sag and droop a little bit in spots. You obviously don't want to go too close or too hot because, you know, A, you'll hurt your fingers when you're touching this stuff, and you'll likely damage the plastic if it goes too hot. So I can see it starting to sag there in a few spots. in there. See that it's reshapable already. It's still kind of hot. See how it easily puts in the fingerprints. And you can roll this. Yeah, you know, so it can become a different shape altogether. You can start to see those colors coming through. You know, these are like the amber and the brown and the I think it's like an ochre or something that I put in there. But it's kind of neat because you get these really interesting striations almost looks like, you know, like natural formations like rock or 
you know, the geological kind of pattern, right? Which is kind of groovy. So it, it would be kind of neat for modeling, uh, you know, and I don't mean in the sense of, you know, people that build cars, those kind of things, but I mean, you know, like, in the sense of, like, the, you know, anybody that likes to do sculpting or likes to do, you know, like, uh, if you're talented enough, you do uh, more organic sculpting, you know, busts and all that kind of stuff, people, animals. Uh, obviously, this is probably a really good product that will allow you to augment uh, further either 3D prints or possibly other types of sculpting that you can use. So that's kind of neat. You can really see where the colors blend through on this. It really kind of wind in. It, it gives it a really nice marbling effect. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, it, I think this product is going to do fairly well, not just as because it's you know something that's unique to the 3D printer market, but because I think a lot of it's after uh, printer effect kind of things that it's going to be able to do. So you know people will be able to to utilize this you know arts and crafts type stuff, or you know like I said for, for augmenting other things that you do. Well, I'm just going to heat this back up again and give it another thing here and show you just how remoldable it is. And you'll see it'll it'll start to sag down. There it goes there, it's starting to melt in spots. You know, as it gets thinner, of course, it'll be less time than it will require to do that kind of stuff. You know, so you can you can take this and you know you can reshape it again. You know, it it, it smooths in really nice. You can hear it popping there once in a while. That's obviously where some air has gotten trapped inside as it as it melted. You know, so I mean yeah, sure you can make your own rock. <laughs> Anybody that's wanting to be able to have something that's, you know, uh, designed for, I don't know, maybe people could use this for, you know, unique designs for jewelry or for, you know, making your own watch bands. I'm sure that there's a lot of potential uses for this that I'm never even going to come close to thinking about. I just like to mess around with this kind of stuff because it's always kind of neat to see... <laughs> what other potential is out there for stuff in the 3D printing market in the industry. And so yeah, you can you can really do a lot. You can start to see now where it doesn't pull away as easily anymore. You know, that's usually your cue that it's, you know, even though it might still feel a little bit warm, it's uh, you know, but it, it's got kind of a, a rock look to it now, which is kind of cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. This is this is uh, eMorph by eSun. Uh, like I said, really nice product to work with. It takes color beautifully. I've done a couple other quick little experiments with a few more vibrant colors um, that uh, didn't make the video, but I'm going to redo some of them so that I can post them so that people can see that you know it's it, it takes the nice rich colors as well as it takes these nice earth tones as well. And uh, you know, hopefully that uh, this is something I can start putting on my channel. Little things like this. You know, I have a YouTube channel. It's 3D Fix. Um, so if anybody's interested, check that out. I'm just starting to get things up there now with some time lapses and a few other things. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Take care. Peace out.